Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we have, it uh, looks like an A1708 MacBook. It says it doesn't turn on. Let's take a look at this MacBook and see if we can make it work again. First thing that we're going to do is take the bottom off of the machine. We're going to take a look inside the computer and see what it looks like. Yes, this does look like a MacBook. It does indeed look like a MacBook. So we are going to unplug the battery as we always do and see how many amps it's taking to try and figure out what is wrong with the board. That's typically the first thing that we like to do is see how many amps it's taking because we like to link that to our problem. By the way, anybody who would like to learn how to do this type of work, in the description of this video, there's going to be a PowerPoint presentation that's about 150 pages long that goes over a lot of electronics repair basics. This is free. Thank you to Mr. Chris Yarsop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in my charger and see what I get. What do I get on the charger? 20 volts, all right, 19 milliamps. Now, 20 volts means that PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is going to be present because that's necessary in order for us to get the, uh, the charger to put out 20 volts instead of 5. I'm going to use a 3-year-old version of Flex Board View to show you exactly what I mean on the screen in the schematic right now. We're going to go through and show you precisely why it is that we need that we know that we have a particular power rail as a result of we getting us getting 20 volts. So on this machine, the charger is going to sp go, is going to speak to a charge controller chip. Take a look over here. Where do we go? So this here is a charging controller chip. Actually, this is not it yet. We're going to find that if we continue. Here we go. CD3215. CD3215. Now, let, let's go over how this chip is going to work. This is a USB-C port controller. I'm going to put both the board view and the schematic on the screen uh, for this one. Here we go. And also, let's just kind of go over to the machine itself. So the charger is going to plug into the charge port, which is this thing right here. See this? Charger plugs into charge port. Charge port is over here. Now let's go to the schematic in the board view. What is this? This over here is the charge port. Let's find that on the schematic. All right, so we go over here. PDF. J3300. Now these are all the connections from the charge port. Now, one of these connections from the charge port is going to be a data line that speaks to the USB-C controller chip. And that is going to be the one that says USB-CC1. Let's scroll and find that. Here we go. USB-C CC1 con and there's also a CC2 con. Thank you, Robert Jorgensen. I appreciate it. Now, this USB XAC, uh, I clicked on the wrong one. My apologies there. I meant to click on this one. Here we go. So this is going to be a data line that goes from the charger to the charging controller chip. As you can see, it goes through this, and it goes from there to the little charging controller chip. Now, let's take a look at this charge controller chip over here, the USB-C port controller, which is a CD3215. On the board is known as U3200. This chip needs to get power to turn on. This chip over here needs to get power in order to turn on. Now let's see if anybody here can guess which one of these is the power that it needs to turn on. Touch Bar Mac works only in safe boot. Replace Touch Bar. A critical software update is required, but an error was encountered. Okay, the problem with a critical update is encountered is that can be almost anything. A lot of the times it winds up being a T1 issue, so it can be that you have corrosion on your touch bar. It can be corrosion on the touch bar that you're not going to really see until you take it out or something hiding around there. Usually that winds up being some, like corrosion around T1 chip or something like that, but the problem with that is that it can often be just about anything. Now, if you take a look at the schematic over here, you'll see that... 
there's something over here. Oh, almost every chip that you see on a MacBook schematic. The left and the right is going to be is going to be usually you know a bunch of different signals and stuff like that. But the power, the actually power the chip that's usually going to be on the top, and that's not different here. So you'll see V in three V three V in three V three voltage in three three point three volts, and that is PP three V three underscore G three hot underscore UPC XB. That is really it is a different way of saying PP three V three G three hot. So this goes through a resistor where PP3V3G3Hot is. So in order for this chip to speak to the charger and tell the charger, I am a MacBook. I'm not a GoPro. I'm not a phone. I don't want 5 or 9 volts. I want 20. This chip over here, this CD3215, needs to work. And, the way, and it, in order for work, it's going to need PP3V3G3Hot. So I already know that these two chips are doing their job. Because if they weren't doing their job, we would have 5 volts in the charger and not 20. What I also know when I see 20 volts in the charger instead of 5 is that this power rail over here, PP3V3 underscore G3Hot, has to be present. This rail must be present. So now I know that I need to start looking through other rails. Now there's going to be a page on the schematic. Let's find that page in the schematic. Oh, uh, where did I? Here we go. And this lists all your power rails. Now, one thing that's important to know when you're looking at your page with your power rails is that this is not listed often in the actual order that they turn on. So the way this works is you have your G3 hots, always on, S5s, on when the machine is off, S4, on when the machine is in hibernate, S3, on when the machine is sleeping, SO on when the machine is on. An example of an S3 rail, which would be something that would be used for, let's say, um, what memory would be, uh, let's, well, memory, uh, memory power. When you put the machine asleep, it's not on, but all the stuff that was on your screen doesn't go away. The windows you had open, the applications you had open, that gets saved to RAM. So your RAM has to be powered on in order for that to work. Example of an S4 rail would be, let's say, something like, um, an S4 rail would be a keyboard or a trackpad because your trackpad is still going to work even when the machine is hibernated. So you can have the machine in hibernate, but you could hit the space bar, you could hit the trackpad, and it will then turn on the computer. But in order for the computer to be able to know if you're hitting the keyboard or the trackpad, they need to be getting power to be turned on. An SO rail are rails that are on when the computer's on and working. An example of this would be, let's say, the CPU, the screen, because those CPU and the screen, they need to be on when the computer's on, but they don't need to be on when the computer is sleeping or hibernating or off. And a G3 hot rail is something that's on all the time. That would be something like, let's say, the battery charging rail, because even if the computer's completely off, you still want to have the ability to charge the battery. You need to have your G3 hots, S5s, S4s, S3s, SOs, and this is like a pyramid. It's like the food pyramid, except the food pyramid was bullshit and this wasn't. So this is a pyramid that is going to be necessary in order for you to get a, for you to tell which rails come first. So for instance, when you look at the schematic or board view, you may think, well, I should just measure all of these rails in order. However, PP3V3 G3 hot shows up in the schematic after PPBus G3 hot. If you need PP3V3 underscore G3 hot for your charger to work, and you need your charger to work for any of the other rails to work, then you need this before you need that. So the, the order in this is completely wrong. Your G3 hot rail needs to show up before your S5 rail. So if you simply check the rails as they appear in the schematic, in the order that they appear, then you are going to be very, very screwed. You're not going to understand well, what the hell you're doing because you're going to be checking this before you check this. Yet you need this to create that because this is going to be needed for you to get that that is going to be needed for you to get this. So the order of the rails in the schematic is very confusing because they don't tell you and they don't put them in a list. This is something that you need to know and that they expect you to know in order to be able to work on the board. But once you understand that, it's actually fairly simple. You need your G3 hots, you need your S5s, your S4, your S3, your SO, and then once your SOs are there, then you can check for your Australians, like Paul Daniels. Now, what we're going to do over here is we're going to take the board out of the machine and we are going to then measure to see which rail it is that is missing in this computer. Once I find my magnet. Aha, here's the magnet. So we are going to take this out of here. No flooding, no flooding. 
I haven't looked at the basement yet, to be honest with you. I'm going to unplug the solid state drive because there's no need for me to be touching what the customer's data while working on the motherboard, which is the problem. Okay, so we are going to check down the list of rails. Now, let's see if you guys can tell me where I should be looking first. So, PPG, PP3V3G3 hot. We know that has to be there because the charger is giving us 20 volts. And in order to get 20 volts, the CD3215 has to work. And for the CD3215 to work, that means that we have to, uh, we, we need PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So what is the next rail that I'm going to check on the list? What's the next rail? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Come on. Come on, you... Not S4, you fuck. We're not even... We, 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 have, we, we know that one G3 hot is present. So if we need G3 hot before S5, and then we need S5 before S4, why are you skipping S4? Did you listen to my lecture at all? Really now? Great. Lovely to know that I was speaking to the fucking wall for the past five minutes. You guys say that I don't read Twitch chat? You don't listen to my damn stream! I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to X Twitch chat right now. That's right. Reading Twitch chat is depressing. Next. Next. Can YouTube chat come up here? YouTube chat? You mother... <laughs> All right. Next. Which power rail do we have to check next? We know PP3v3 underscore G3 hot is there. That's the only one that we've checked. You don't deserve right to repair, Mr. Yellowbeard. I agree with you. You don't deserve it. What's next? Which power rail? Come on. We have 20 volts. No! Tw so SO because we have 20 volts? Okay. You need G3 hot when the computer's off. S5 when computer's off. S4, computer hibernating. S3, computer sleeping. SO, computer on. You don't even need to know what the states are. You need to just know that it's in order. G3, S5, S4, S3, SO. 5, 4, 3, O. Oh. God. You guys are the people responsible for the damn food pyramid. I watched a documentary. I want to clusterfuck the food pyramid as the other day. Okay, let's try this again. We have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. We know that we have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot because when we plug this in, as you can see over here, when plugged in, it shows 20 volts on our USB-C ammeter. This means that the CD3215 is working. The CD3215 needs PP3V3 underscore G3 hot in order to function. So I know that I'm getting that power rail uh, by virtue of the fact that we have 20 volts present in the charger. What rail do we check next on this list? PP3V3S5. No. Are we done with G3Hots yet? Have we finished our G3Hots yet? Okay, Nikito says G3Hot. Okay, which G3Hot? Because we have many G3Hot rails on this computer. Which would, what, what would you check next? Give me the name of something. Anything. It's on the screen. Catherine, not you too. Not you too, Catherine. I trusted you. You're a mod. Oh, God. I'm so stressed right now. You should be Ganon. I'm going to throw a chair at you. Okay, let's, let's make this simpler. Do you see any rails on the screen with a G3 hot suffix? This is depressing. Okay, BP, PPDCNG3 hot. At least that's an answer in good faith. Good guess, but that's not it. 
We know that we have PPDCNG3 hot because you need PPDCNG3 hot in order to get PP3V3G3 hot. And we know we have PP3V3G3 hot because this is 20 volts. So DCN means power coming into the computer. DCN means the voltage that's coming into the computer to do anything. That, 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 that's pretty much like the 120 volts from your wall. So we need that for anything else to work. So if you plug something into your wall outlet and it doesn't turn on, but a little light shows up on the, on the device. Let's say it has a red light and it blinks. Even if the device doesn't work, you know that your power outlet from your wall has to be working because your device has a red light blinking on it. And same thing is true here. So if we have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot over here, then that means that we must have PPDCN G3 hot because to get this one over here, you would need to have this one over here. Next up, Travis says PP bus G3 hot, so does Joseph Hyman. Very good. That is the next rail. So we have PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, which we know we have. We have PPDC in G3 hot, which we know we have by virtue of knowing that we have this rail. PP bus G3 hot is the next one on the list. Beautiful. If Lewis has children one day, I feel they will be disowned the moment they get a wrong answer. Correct. We strongly believe in adoption here at Rossman Repair Group. And every single employee that gets an answer wrong gets given up for adoption. Okay, so we're going to do over here is we're going to check and see if we have PPBush G3 hot. Now on Paul Daniels' software, when you right click, it will actually show you on the board view where, it show, where that is. It will show you on the board view where that rail is. So let's see what we get over here. So on F7000, we're supposed to have PPBush G3 hot, or as Erica would call it, PPBush G3 cold. and we have zero on both sides of the fuse. Now, what can cause a power rail to be missing? Can we list the different things that will cause power rails to go missing? Cat piss, very good. This board has no liquid damage on it that I can see. So we can rule out cat piss and it doesn't smell. Short fuse, uh, shot fuse, uh, that very good. Uh, so let's go over that theory. So it could be a short, uh, it could be a bad fuse. Now, as you see over here in the schematic and board view, where PPBush G3 hot is created is on F7000. So I measured on F7000. Now we have both sides of the fuse. Side two is the side that's going to the system, and side one is the side where it's created. So let's plug this in. Now, if we have power on pin one of the fuse, but not two, that's a blown fuse. If we don't have power on either side of the fuse, it's going to be something else. So the right side of the fuse is going to be pin one. And we have zero volts there. And so, so it's not going to be the fuse because, as you can see, we have no power on either pin two or pin one. What next? Short. Okay, it could be a short, short to ground. Now, a short to ground would mean that rather than this going all the way across and doing what it's supposed to, one example of a short to ground would be, let's say, instead of it making it, let's say that this is supposed to be making PPBush G3 hot over here, and instead of going all the way over there, if one of these capacitors is dead, it'll, it'll start to act like a wire or a resistor. And instead of it being a capacitor to ground, you'll kind of have like a wire to ground. So let's say one of these caps dies. Imagine that instead of it being two plates with an insulator in the middle, like what you see here, this is two plates with an insulator in the middle. Imagine this crashes into that one and then it's a wire. So the reason they call it a short circuit is instead of making the long path through everything in the computer, instead of being able to make the long path and go through all the things it's supposed to go through, it stops short over here and dies and doesn't make its way to the rest of the computer. And the way you can measure if you have a short circuit to ground is by putting your multimeter over here into ohms mode. This is my meter. I'm going to put it to ohms mode. Uh, I'm going to plug it back into my little serial reader over here so that the computer can see what I see. You put one probe on ground, and ground is going to be a screw hole. A little copper by the screw hole over here serves fine as a ground plane or you could find something else as a ground on the board, and then doing this. And as you can see, we have zero ohms to ground. So zero ohms to ground. What that means is that there is a short circuit to ground. So we have a short circuit to ground. Now, how are we going to figure out what is shorted to ground? How do we figure out which one is shorted to ground? Because there's a lot of different things in this board that have PP by G3 hot going through them. Let's see if we have any ideas. Thermal cam. Yeah, but that requires getting up. 
Nah, a little less of that. Okay, what else can we do that? <laughs> Check which side the short is on by rotating the fuse out of the circuit. Ooh, that is a good one. That would allow us to limit. That would allow us to get a better idea of which one is shorted. Of that would allow us to figure out. Uh, let me show you. So, for instance. If we take off this fuse over here, if we remove the fuse, we get to figure out if the short is on this side or on the system side. So this is kind of like the drawbridge. If we lift up the drawbridge, we can figure we can isolate it and then measure this side and this side separately. Because right now, we can only see, we, we can only guess which side it's on. It's either, because if this fuse is good, and I imagine that it is, we're just going to double check that over here. I'm going to measure across the fuse. Zero ohms. All right, the fuse is good. That means I would have to remove this fuse in order to tell if the short is over here or over here. Because a fuse is kind of like a wire. So if I'm, I can't measure for a short over here on pin one without measuring for a short on pin two because the wire is, is, is there between pin one and pin two. This fuse is there. Now, many people think that if the short was after the fuse, that it would have blown. And you are seriously misunderstanding the way that Apple designs these systems or, well, doesn't. So let's take a bet. Do you guys think that the short is on the system side or do you think that the, the short is on the PPBush G3 Hawk creation side? Let's make a wager. And also, before we uh, inject voltage to try and figure out where the short is, let's see if it's visible. Let's see if it's visible. So we're going to take a tour of the motherboard. Let's take a nice little visual tour. What do you guys think? Yeah. Take a visual tour. Also, you don't need to see me when I'm in the microscope. Let me get my face out of here. It's disgusting. No need to see me. But I should I fix, get to fix a USB connector. Uh, Catherine, I'd suggest something like a TS100 or the TS80 used, if you can, because they can work with Hacko tips. They're very affordable. Someone actually came up with a smarter version of that iron. It was in my letters to Lewis in my Discord, but I forget the name of it. It's on the tip of my tongue. What we're looking for is something that looks like it's been highly stressed because it's having 12 volts sent to ground through it. Now remember, when you have a lot of energy flowing through something, what is heat? Heat is energy. Energy is heat. So whatever has a lot of power flowing through it is going to look like it got boiling hot, unless it's being limited and sometimes the, the ISL is smart and limits it. But sometimes the ISL is dumb and just lets it burn through a short. So there's nothing here that really looks obvious, obviously burned. So this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So what we're going to do, we are going to remove this fuse to try and figure out what side of the system our short is on. Ah, Daniel Smullen is here. He said stop there, but unfortunately I was looking down at the board. Okay. Did you see something? Usually it's this one over here. By the way, never look at your nail under a microscope. It's depressing. Is that a hair? Do I have a hair on my nail? My God, looks like one of those Felix the Cat episodes. Oh, this guy had a hair growing out of something and ugh. Oh man, humans are gross. Okay, Daniel said he saw something, so I'm gonna give this another look through.
I always wash my hands, Hellbringer. You look at your ha hands under a 45X microscope, Mofo. Now we're going to see on what side it's on. I heard you're trying to lose weight again, so I sent donuts. Enjoy. You absolute bastard. That's evil. JP is a cruel man. What a cruel man. I guess that'll teach everybody not to come to work just because it's a hurricane. That'll teach everybody because they're going to miss out on the donuts. Because Kevin and Steve and Dan are going to eat all of them. Alright, so what we're doing here is we're going to remove this fuse. Because this fuse is not allowing us to tell which side the short is on. And I want to have a slightly better idea. By the way, Daniel Smallin, it wouldn't be a 0201. It's usually one of the larger tantalum ones. Okay, so let's see which side it's on. Is it on the system side or the creation side? I'm going to bet it's on the system side, which is on the left. And I'm going to be wrong because it's not. Okay. Right. Yeah, the right side is 1.1 ohm. 1.1 ohm. So it is on that side. And... Yep. Okay. So that narrows down the list of what it could potentially be. So that makes it easier for me to find. So what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to send a volt through the board using my power supply. So we have a short to ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one volt where people push G3 hot is for my power supply. And then the grounds of the power supply will be hooked up to the grounds of the board. Meaning that whatever it is that is getting hot, whatever it is that's sending that to ground, is going to get really, really hot. And then I'll be able to tell which it is. By the way, if you're following along at home, do not follow the advice of the individual in the chat that said that what you should do is put your balls on the board to figure out what gets hot. Your ball skin is more sensitive than the skin on the rest of your body, but that's really not a good way to go about it. Don't ask me how I know that. Okay, so what I need to find right now is a little wire that I'm going to use to send, uh, send voltage over to the board. Here we go. So I, um, first thing I'm going to do is change my power supply because my power supply is set to 18 volts and that's not something that I want here. I am that dude, I am. Two drop in, that's a two drop in. Muhammad, my friend. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Back in yesterday. Da 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 da. Two drop in, not the two drop in. Okay. I'm going to set the voltage of the power supply up to one volt. Attach the grounds of the power supply. We're going to set the grounds of the power supply and attach that to the grounds of the board. And the power of the power supply is going to go to the peepee -pee bus of the board. I just need to get a better way to probe this. Board repair. Lewis, aren't you a New York realtor and economist? <laughs> oh, man. That's what it feels like recently. I get excited about what I get excited about for a while, and then I find something new.
Daniel, I will find that cap again uh, shortly. You're going to help me f find out where that is, and then I'll look at it, and I'll go over it with you. Okay. So... Da, 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 da. I want to. I want to know which cap you're talking about. I'll take a look at it. So we are going to use our soldering iron over here. Clean off my tip. And we are going to solder on my wire. That's the world's worst solder joint. However, this is temporary and solely for the purpose of blowing something up. So, don't really care. That is not a permanent joint. That is only there for the amount of time that I am trying to figure out where my short is so that I can blow it up. Now, are you all ready to watch a short get blown up? Let's watch this short get BTFO'd. One, two, three. Whoa. Okay, something's going to be getting really, really hot here because uh, I'm using the full 5 amps. Oh. Yeah, this is going to be getting warm. Okay. So now we're going to do what's called the owie test. Because every time I hook up the damn thermal camera, the thermal camera causes my internet to go out and it drives me insane. My thermal camera uses some IP based thing and it sucks. Okay, so first off, let's make the ground get a better connection over there. Okay. Is it you? 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 I'm going over common areas for PP bus shorts. We're going to hope and pray it's not the CPU. Actually, it can't be the CPU because it has to be on the PP bus G3 Hot Creation side. Okay, this actually makes it a lot easier. I completely forgot that we tried to do the... That, that I already brought up the drawbridge so that we could figure out if it was on the PP bus G3 Hot Creation side or on the PP bus G3 Hot 2 system side. That was dumb. I shouldn't. Okay. Oh, so remember what we did over here on this side. What I did is I removed this. I removed this so that I could tell if the short was here or here. And it's here. So that means that the short is going to be on one of these. This capacitor, this capacitor, this chip, or this capacitor. Like, that's it. That's all it could be on. It can't be on everything else that I was touching because... I removed this fuse. So people, it doesn't, there, there is no short on this side. We measured this side. There's no short. The short is over here. So it's not on any one of these other things that PP bus G3 hot goes to. It has to be on something that is on the left of the fuse, on the beginning of the fuse, over here. So it's going to be this capacitor. It's going to be this transistor. It's going to be this capacitor. Or it's going to be this chip or cap. So let's proceed with the OWIE test. Oh, but is it the, that or is it the thing on the other side of the board, though? So it's either going to be this capacitor down there. Or it's going to be this cap. No. This. No. This. Ow! Okay, there we go. So this capacitor over here is short at the ground. Also, one thing to understand is that it makes sense to use the lowest voltage possible for this. So let's say that the short was on this side over here, right? Let me explain how this goes. Let's say the short was on the system side. Now, PP bus D3 hot is 12.6 volts. So this is 12.6 volts, and this is going to be used by a number of different power rails 
So let's say we're talking about this one over here. This takes, uh, would it make sense to lean your elbow or palm on your hand to keep it from shaking? That, that, that's not it. That's not what causes it, unfortunately. Uh, that's a long story. So this, let's just t say it's this transistor, right? What does this transistor do? It takes PP bus G3 hot, which is 12 volts, and it takes those 12 volts, and it then sends uh, pulses of 12 volts over to the CPU. This is a buck converter. Now, let's say this transistor is stuck, and instead of doing switching on, off, on, off, 12, 0, 12, 0, 12, 0, 12, 0, it's just doing 12. You know what would happen? You would send 12 volts straight to your CPU, and you would kill it. Because your 5-volt rail, your 3-volt rail, your 1-volt rail, most of those rails are created by PP bus G3 hot, which is a 12-volt rail. And it's created by switching. So you have a transistor that's turning on and off and on and off and on and off, and then it's kind of averaging it. So you have a little bit of 12, a little bit of 12, a lot of 0. A little bit of 12, a lot of 0. So a little bit of 12 and a lot of 0. And I go over that in my document, which you could see in the links down below, freely available. So if you were to just send 12 volts into the system right now, you would want, and the short circuit was, let's say, on one of these transistors over here that sends power over to the CPU. You, if this was the cause of the short, if this was broken and just, you know, open and sending things everywhere, you would, I mean, closed and sending things everywhere, you would actually wind up sending 12 volts to your CPU. And although your board may have started with just one transistor failure, once you do a short test, with a high voltage, now you've caused a CPU failure, and now you have a system that's not economically viable to repair. So when doing this, when doing a check for a short, using the lowest voltage of any rail in the system is a safe way to go about it. So if the lowest voltage that anything in the system uses is 0.65 volts or 1 volt, start at 1 volt. This way, you don't have to worry about screwing anything up downstream. Now, we know that it's that cap because of our AWI test. So we're going to remove that cap, put the fuse back on, and see if that fixes our problem. This is not something that I really need to do in a microscope because this is gigantic. Also, I'm just going to unplug the board from the power supply here because I don't need to keep putting power through this cap anymore. Now, this cap is pretty big, so I don't need to do this in the uh, microscope. Take the wire off while I'm at it. I have cat that is, uh, it's only going to take as much amperage as is requested, but a short to ground is going to request as many amps as possible. A short to ground is greedy. It's kind of like Mr. Clinton with greenies. Mr. Clinton will never stop requesting more greenies. It doesn't matter how many you give him, he will always demand more, and he will loudly scream and try to bite your hand off in the pursuit of more greenies. The same way that a short to ground is always going to want to consume more amperage. If you give electricity a, pa a pathway to ground, it is, is not going to limit itself unless you limit it with a resistive load between it and ground. And if it sees a pathway to ground, it's going to take that path to ground, and it's going to take as much power to ground as it possibly can. All right, so I'm going to combine the leaded solder that was on the board with some lead-free solder to make it a little bit easier to remove. We're going to wick that solder using Goot Wick, available at store.rossmangroup.com. Like so. Can make some nice flat pads here. Right. Got it. Test the capacitor, he says. I don't need to test the capacitor. My finger tested the capacitor. I'm good, bro. My finger did that job for me. Burn away the alcohol. The Aoi test is a time-tested tradition here. 
because I have not figured out why my network settings don't allow the thermal camera to work properly in them. And the thing with the Yowie test is I always wind up fixing the board within the confines of the Yowie test. It would be different if it took like two hours to find the short, but I always wind up finding the short inside of a minute or two. By the way, I burned away too much of the flux. Do you see how this looks like a Hershey's Kiss? The bottom solder pad of that capacitor over here. This looks like a Hershey's Kiss. And when you see that, it means that you have not used enough flux or that you kept the iron there uh, for too long. I have not bridged any empty slots that I see. No. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fuse back and I'm also going to take a capacitor and put it over there that I grabbed from my little donor board pile. My donor board is my pile is my good little shit pile over here that I like to grab components and things from. How high is the resistance of the fuse? Uh -huh. Paul does not use enough flux. Paul is not thinking about the future of this great company. Because what happened is, I got an email from Inventex saying, hey, we noticed that you've been ordering less than you have in the past. What's been going on? You know, is there anything we can help you with? And I wanted to reply with it, yes. We have, I, I changed who did the board repair videos and he's a bad influence. He's telling people that they don't have to use as much flux as they did before. That's my only shilling right there. I don't have Audible. I don't have NordVPN. I don't have Raid Shadow Legends. I don't have Indeed or ZipRecruiter. I don't have Raycons. I don't have ExpressVPN. But I have Flux, or I had Flux. That was all. Okay, now we're going to use some rapid cool board technology. We're going to put this over here. And we're going to wait for the board to cool off a little bit. Let's see if the board cools off a little bit. Do minions deserve sushi? They do, because they came to work through a flood. So they actually, yeah. They deserve a lot more than what they get. They deserve better than what they get. Sometimes I feel like a piece of shit boss for moving, because I really thought that I needed to move in order to maintain this uh, as a company, because it was growing and business was on its way up, and I had 13 or 14 people working out of a hallway. And then right as I move to a place that's more expensive, the world economy gets destroyed. I kind of wonder if I, I would have been able to serve my employees better had I stayed put. Because I really thought I was going to continue growing and be able to give them more opportunity. And yeah, the, literally the exact opposite happened. I feel quite guilty about that. Uh, so 20 volts, 500 milliamps. As you can see, it's now drawing 500 milliamps, which means it is turning on and it is working, which it wasn't before. I'm going to mail this capacitor to Daniel Smullen. That is going to be my thank you to Daniel for his work on the wiki. I'm going to send him that. Take this solder ball and toss it out. I'm going to see if I get a picture on the screen and make sure it just turns on and all that good stuff. And then once I determine that it turns on, the board will get cleaned 
the machine will get reassembled by the quality assurance department. We actually do have a quality assurance department here. We don't give them back to people just with the fan spinning. That has been a running joke for a long time, but we... There are people here that make sure that everything else, like Wi-Fi and keyboard and trackpad and, you know, all that stuff actually works. Back in the day, we'd make sure your DVD drive worked and your Firewire port. Your Firewire 400 port. Those were the days. Those were the days. Well, fan spin is now 500 milliamps for me. When I see 500 milliamps, I know if I got fan spin. Okay. All this can get reassembled later. I almost started a hookah lounge before the pandemic. I'm glad I bailed on that business. Dude, you, you were very close. Eli really does think that we may be uh, trying to wait for a return to normal that never comes. That we may be... L I do wonder if he's correct. Perhaps he is correct. Okay. He's going to plug in the SSD. By the way, never lay your tweezers down on a lithium-ion battery that does not have uh, that does not have shielding or plastic shielding. Because what happens? Let's say you put the, your tweezers down like this, and then you lift it up like this, and then you go to move it forward. I know this may sound lame, but that's a great way to puncture a battery. Never put your tweezers down over here. Just try to avoid doing that. Thank you very much. I I am undeserving, Chris Kelly. I feel bad. Okay, so we're going to get the SSD plugged in there. Be nice and gentle with it. It's somebody's data. I'll plug in some things for fun. Not all the things, but some of the things. Just some of the things. We don't want to get greedy. And let's see if I get a picture on the screen. So let's make sure that none of the little accessories fade away. Okay. Let's see what we get. Wait, we're not going to get anything on the screen because you didn't plug the screen in. How about we plug the screen in? Wouldn't that be a an upgrade? That would be an upgrade now, wouldn't it? Is there an ANSI standard to the ISO 9000 quality control standard? Um, there's a... Fan spin? Fan spin. Fan spin. Apple logo. Fan spin. Yes! Fan spin! All right. So there you have it. We had a short circuit on PPBus underscore G3Hot, which is actually a very simple repair on this model. And, uh, yeah, that's how we found it. That's how we fixed it. And if you want to learn how to do this, I highly suggest that you check out the PowerPoint document that is in the description of this video. It has a lot of good information in it. A lot of good information that will come in very handy if you want to learn how to do this. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.